I'm Katie Nelson. I'm a senior at Emory, and I'm a neuroscience major. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, Sambucus nigra of the Adioxaceae family. Um, Sambucus nigra also is known by numerous um, uh, other names just because of its widespread um, use. And um, so just to name a few, um, it's all most commonly known as elderberry, but also European elder, black elder, and in certain communities, um, Flor de Novia and Shog and Sambuco, just to name a few. Um, its scientific name is derived from Sambuca, which is a Greek instrument that was made from the plant. Um, and it, it is used primarily throughout Europe, which is where most of its traditional uses and folklore stem from. As you can also see from the map where there's a higher concentration um, of its distribution. Um, and it also um, is mostly known for its high content of flavonoids and anthrocyanins. Um, so elderberry is actually a shrub that ranges from 4 to 10 meters in height. And it has small creamy white flowers in clusters and also small like spherical black berries. Um, it tends to grow in disturbed sites such as hedgerows, roadsides, and even building sites. Um, it's native to Europe, but has been cultivated um, like all around the world, mostly for its um, uses. And the only pollinator known are birds. And it has, um, like I said, numerous traditional uses. Um, so I just summarized um, what the plant materials are primarily used for. Uh, the leaves are used topically to treat like wounds, lacerations, and insect bites. And that can be either in like a cream or an ointment, or in some cases, they just put the leaves directly right on your skin. Um, the bark could be used topically for burns or ingested as a laxative or a mimetic. And in the Aberesh community of southern Italy, it's involved in the ritual healing process of a specific headache. Um, tea made from the flowers are ingested for sore throats and toothaches and used as an expectorant. Um, and it's also been used topically to treat um, food blister, foot, sorry for that typo, <laughs> foot blisters and sores. Um, <laughs> um, also, um, tea made from the berries, ripe berries specifically, um, can be used for flu symptoms such as cold, cough, fever, body aches, and also to treat influenza. Um, it also has um, some history of use for dropsy and diabetes. Um, but besides its medicinal uses, it also is used in the culinary arts. Um, so the flowers have been used to make uh, beer. And you can also um, fry them in like butter or like oil, which is what the picture shows, their little fritters. Um, the berries as well um, have been used to make wine and ale, and also been used in jellies and pies. And in some cases, they're also used as a dyeing agent and also used as a dyeing agent for the wine. So they actually, in some countries, were kind of made illegal to put in your wine because you just made it look pretty, not necessarily used it. Um, and then I wanted to talk more specifically about its folklore because it's deeply rooted in um, primarily Germany, Denmark, and England, and then also within the Christianity and Wicca religion beliefs. Um, and probably the most widely accept accepted belief is that it's bad luck to burn or cut the tree. And this stems from the fact that um, people believe that there's an entity that lives within the tree and that you must ask permission before you can cut it or else you will be punished. And there's varying degrees of what your punishment is and, and so forth. Um, and this entity, entity has different names depending on the culture. Um, so in England, it was... Um, referred to as the old lady or old girl. Um, in the Wicca religion, um, they, they just think of it as like a witch. Um, and in Denmark, it's, um, I'm gonna, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's Heidelmoor, which translates into elder mother. And this is actually traced, oh, this picture is showing, it's from Hans Christian Andersen's um, fairy tale, which is actually called Elder Mother and it's a story about it. So I don't know if you can see it very well, but within the tree you can kind of see like a humanistic feature to it. Um, and um, it's which one of its more interesting factoids is that it's believed that it's never struck by lightning. 
And within the Christianity religion, this stems from the belief that um, Judas hung himself from the tree, and also that the cross um, made for uh, Jesus Christ's crucifixion was also made from elderberry. Um, and then within the Wicca belief system, it's believed that on like Midsummer's Eve, if you stand underneath the tree and inhale the flower scent, you actually will see the fairies that uh, live in the tree, around the tree, and underneath it. Um, and there's also um, another uh, belief that's set with the Rollwright stones in England. Um, and there's like a story behind it of how um, a king and his soldiers are riding through the land and they came across a witch who said, you know, if you take one more step, you'll turn into stone. And of course, you know, they took a step. Um, so there's uh, a pasture you can go to where they've actually made it a landmark. And you come across a big stone that's supposed to be the king, a bunch of um, other little stones spread about that are supposed to be his knights. And it's said that after they turned to stone, the witch turned herself into an elderberry tree. And that if you cut the tree, it'll bleed. Um, just kind of random things. Um, another really odd one that I found was, um, I believe it was England, that they believed if a pregnant woman stood under the tree for a certain amount of time, it would actually induce abortion. So it's kind of got some good qualities and some bad qualities associated with it. Um, but to talk more about the, the chemistry, um, it has many um, compounds in it, um, some flavonoids, um, triterpenes. Um, but just here are some of the simpler ones. So there's a simbunagrin, which is a cyanogenic glycoside found in leaves. And it's considered um, to be used against um, herbivore as a defense mechanism. And the two more commonly studied flavonoids are rutin and quercetin. And that's a picture of rutin in the bottom corner. And those are primarily found in the berries and flowers. Um, and the rutin has been shown um, to have, well, rutin and quercetin have been shown to have antioxidant um, properties along with um, insulin-like properties. There's been a few studies looking into that. Um, so for biological activity, there was quite a bit. I just kind of tried to summarize it a little briefly. Um, and some extract of the berry was used. Um, and actually, they used a, um, a product called Rubini, which claims that they use standardized elderberry <laughs> extract. And it was shown to have antibacterial effects against gram-positive and negative bacteria. Um, it was also used. Um, the same uh, extract was used against influenza viruses. Um, so it has some antiviral um, properties. Um, the insulin pr properties were done from the flower. And the insecticidal activity, um, it's a little different because it, it doesn't have um, human applications. They took um, a protein from the bark of the elderberry and made a transgenic um, tobacco plants from it and observed that when aphids fed off of the plant, it was toxic to them. So it was more of in terms of um, like pest control. And that's a picture of a tobacco aphid, which is one of the things it was found toxic to. Um, for clinical studies, there's very few of them and they kind of um, have a wide variety of use. So um, the sambucal syrup, which is sold um, throughout Europe, was used um, in a clinical study for um, influenza viruses type A and B. And it was found to be effective, um, like significantly effective. And, um, re and the participants had a faster recovery time. And additionally, there were no adverse side effects um, reported. And uh, tea, they didn't specify what brand or what type. But a tea mixture using elderberry was used as a laxative in another study. And the participants reported that they had improved um, bowel functions. And again, there was no adverse side effects um, reported. And then the extracts of berries and the flowers from elderberry was used in combination with asparagus officinalis and seeing weight reduction in their obese um, participants. And they also um, reported that they had increased um, like uh, mental and physical well-being as well. 
Um, for contraindications, it has been um, widely stated that the unripe berries are toxic, but there hasn't been said like a reason why there's a specific compound present in the unripe berries that's not in the ripe berries for why um, this is. And um, the picture is just of un unripe berries. They have a green color compared to the black color. Um, and it was also stated that certain extracts should not be mixed with diuretics. Um, and that's because in the clinical study where they addressed the laxative properties, they noticed that there was a decrease in the potassium levels. Um, so you wouldn't want to be combining that with uh, diuretic. Um, and that's really the only thing I've had. Otherwise, it's considered generally safe. Um, for allopathic and CAM therapies, it's once again primarily used throughout Europe. It's not very well known in the States. Um, and some of the products um, that I've already named and some others are Sambucol, uh, Rubini, and OptiBerry, which is a combination of other berries and elderberry, and then the Brazilian tea that they used for that clinical study. Um, but then I also found online numerous other